Welcome back to this Viewpoint special and we're joined by the final candidate of the evening and that's Nick Cruz for the PDP. Good evening, Mr. Cruz. Good evening, Christine. I'm going to start with an email. It's a good one to start with. Nick, why and how would Gibraltar benefit by election? I suppose that means electing you to Parliament as opposed to the other candidates. Well, people have seen what the other two parties are currently doing and they understand what will change if they vote for either of those parties, which is absolutely nothing. So what we have is the potential of a 10th GSLP Liberal voice or an 8th GST voice. The reality is nothing will change. The sentiment, at least the one that we're getting and we have for a while, and I think it's even echoed to some extent uh, by, by, by both parties. And I give an example. The, the chief minister talked about nine ministers and doing a, 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 a job with nine ministers. The leader of opposition talked about enhancing politics by bringing a new voice into politics. Probably didn't mean me, but at the end of the day, that sentiment is, is echoed. And so the question that people need to ask is, if you want a new parliamentarian, will you be assisted by a tenth voice or an eighth voice? Will it change anything? Or will a new voice be something that will be more constructive, something that will be more helpful? And I think that, that, that our party feels, having worked hard for seven years to, to bring constructive politics to Gibraltar, that a voice in Parliament will be something fresh and something that will help Gibraltar as a whole. If elected, how would you work in Parliament? And what it, this question means, it, it carries on, who would you support and how? And I think it means who you'd be closest yeah, to. Yeah, no, I understand. No, I, look, it's, it's abs I made, I've answered this question before. It's, it's crystal clear. In our view, we, we, we simply take a, a very simple view, and that is Gibraltar first, politics second. I would be happy to support government when they're right uh, and happy to, to oppose them when they're wrong. So if, if, the, if the position is that the government are pushing something forward which I think is good, if I think I can make sensible recommendations to improve it, I will, but I'll support it. If, on the other hand, I think they're wrong, then I will say why. And if my sentiments happen to be echoed by those in the GSD, well, then it clearly we'll be joining uh, our forces in the sense that we'll be opposing the government because we both think that the government's steps would be wrong. But it won't be a question of choosing one or siding with one against the other, not forgetting that our role as opposition is to act as an accountable check and balance. Uh, and the issue here, and this is the big difference, is that we believe a, a PDP voice can be a genuinely new voice that can be constructive. An eighth GSD uh, voice, have a nice and have a competent uh, Marlene is, and, and I believe that she is, um, will change nothing because seven have changed nothing in terms of bringing in a freshness. An eighth will not do anything, however nice or however competent that person is. And that's just the reality of the political system where you have seven people already in, in opposition. A question uh, from Beatrice. How can you provide constructive government and yet strong opposition at the same time? So do you think that's possible? Yes, I think it is. And, and we've done it repeatedly. I mean, we've done it on a variety of different issues. For example, on the fishing dispute, where we said that the government were naive in the way they triggered it. I think through Facebook, it just wasn't a sensible way to do it. But having understood that that was a case, we made recommendations and we recommended that they should bring in licensing. Well, on the 6th of June, in the Gazette, it was published that they were changing the law so that they could now license fishing. That's an example how a year ago we made a suggestion. Uh, we supported the government to an extent, but we criticised some of the, the ways in which they dealt with things. We made a suggestion. A year later, they've adopted it. It's the same with the previous uh, administration. In 2007, in our manifesto, we recommended 10% tax. We thought there was a right way to go. The, the GST government at the time brought it in 2010. So you can be perfectly constructive, but yet provide strong opposition and you know it's, it's no different to to a family I mean ultimately you know I see Gibraltar very much as a large family and there's times that you might say to someone close to you look I think you're getting it wrong and why not do it this way it doesn't mean you you're weak because you support them even though you might not disagree with that specific policy there's, there's ways of doing both and people understand that in every day every walk of life at work you don't always agree with the people you're working with but there's a difference between just being entirely negative and seeing everything they do is wrong purely for political purposes and actually understanding that in the larger scale of things it is better to try and you know unite when it's possible and and then oppose and oppose in a sensible way if the electorate were to be polarized what would happen to Nick Groose and the PDP in the event that we did what if we did very badly you're yes saying? Yeah. That, that it was uh, one of the things that you described the GSLP the Liberals and the GSD as the big two Yes. That you keep having to fight. Are they still the big two well, in this election? Well, of course, of course, of course. Even in a by-election? Well, look, they shouldn't be. Uh, they're the big two simply because one has, has currently nine ministers and, and one has, has uh, seven opposition, and they are clearly the big two. So I'm not going to pretend we're, 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 you know, we're, we're of that size. We're not. We're not in Parliament. 
Um, so I think the answer to your question is, you know, what would happen in the event that we did badly? Well, you know, if we did really badly, then inevitably we'd have to consider our position. I've made that crystal clear. I have no desire to, to, to knock my head against a brick wall for year after year. We've been doing this for seven years. It's my third election. If people want our style of po politics, if they want constructive politics, if they like what they say, and they need to vote for it, because ultimately, inevitably, if we do have a bad election, then, then we will have to rethink our position. But if, on the other hand, people vote for us and say, we want more of that, we want somebody who's going to perhaps give a more measured approach to things, who's going to talk sense sometimes when all the others are going to extremes on every issue. Well, if they want that and they vote for it, and I see the numbers are there, then we will be clearly uh, w wishing to, to continue uh, and, and, and hopefully challenge in due course for Parliament, not only Parliament, but government. And, and, and let me make it clear that my objective on Thursday is to get into Parliament. Um, if we don't get into Parliament but we come close, I won't consider it to be a failure. We'll be carrying on. But, you know, that is the objective, and it's up to the people in this particular election where they don't have a choice between government and opposition, where they can have a free vote, as we've explained, to make that decision and actually give us a chance. And if they don't think we're doing a good job in two years, they can vote us out. I'm, I'm happy to be judged. OK, we've got a caller on the line. Andy? Hi, good evening, Nick. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Nick, don't you think, after two uh, general election uh, disasters for yourself, that I, uh, the PDP is probably a party that's an experiment gone wrong because yourself and Keith were members of the GSD at one time? Mm. Um, thank you for your question. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Andy, look, when we started the party, it was in 2007. And we understood that in what was a climate at the time with Caruana and Bolsano, that, that tight climate, it was unlikely that we would succeed. But our assumption was that if Mr. Bolsano lost a fourth election, he'd probably step down, or Mr. Caruana would lose an election, he'd probably step down. Mr. Caruana, when he did lose an election, has, in essence, stepped down or is on his way out. Mr. Bolsano, to be fair to the man, um, he's tenacious, he kept on going. So clearly, in that first election, you know, we didn't expect to do well. In that second election, we understood we were, things were polarised. But we always talked about a new landscape, political landscape. And people in the GSD understand that Peter Caruana and all those people who were in the GSD when I was in the GSD, when we fought the battles of, the, of 1996, because we, think, we thought that Gibraltar was going wrong, they're, they're no longer there. They're, 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 they've, in essence, left the GSD. The GSD is not the same animal that it used to be. So I believe that those people can now think about it and say, well, is there a different option? Equally, I think the GISLP has also changed, and inevitably, they have a, uh, an opportunity to make a judgment as to whether or not some of the things we say are, are, are interesting to them, and whether they think having us in opposition would be something that they, even if they supported the government, would think would be a benefit to Gibraltar. So, I don't accept that our experiment has failed completely. I, I am prepared to, to put my name forward and go for it on, on Thursday, and I've been obviously doing it. It's, it's, I get no benefit other than, 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 than the work in the sense that I feel that I can contribute something. So, obviously, um, I, I, I feel, as does the other members of my party, as does Keith as a party who's a chairman, that it is still worth giving our message and putting ourselves up for election. You talk of your message, we've just spoken about the parties not having changed, but is it perhaps, and this is something we discussed with Mr. Summit earlier on, that the electorate hasn't changed, that the elect electorate still votes parties? Yes. It we, is party son. It, absolutely, and, and we so are a party. when will that change? Or well, maybe don't, they don't want to well, change. Well, and we are a party. Look, we're not against a party system. I think Mr. Zemit, he's, he, I can understand the frustration that makes him want to stand for election. It's that frustration with the current battering between the two parties and that acrimony. But the idea that you should benefit Gibraltar by destroying the party system, by trying to see if the constitution can be changed, or in any way, uh, shape or form, having a referendum that... Look, the party system is not wrong. It's not, that's not what's doing damage to politics. It's the way we do politics. It's the inability to recognize that somebody who may have a slightly different point of view will make good points and agreeing with them. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the party. I don't think the electorate um, have, have had, a, had, had a cry to, to get rid of the party system. What they're saying is what we witness every day in Parliament or when it's on, or what we witness is a, is a punch and judy show that, that really is, is turning people off politics. And what they are, I believe they're saying is it's time to make a difference. This is the opportunity, if, if they want to make a difference. I mean, that's clearly the judgment of the electorate. It is not for me to presume what they'll, what they'll say, but, but it's, uh, this is the moment, if they want to make a difference, to make it, because whatever their support has historically been, it won't change on the 5th of July. The government will still be in power, and the GSD will still have their seven members in opposition. Um, there's another email, and it mostly ties with what we're talking about. 
Would you give up if you were beaten by Mr. Summit? Would you be in, by Mr. in the Summit? picture a month ago? All oh, right. Um, look, it's not about you know whether we'd give up if we were beaten by Mr. Summit or not. I mean, look, at the end of the day, if we didn't make any progress, then clearly either the messenger in that case, it's me, and I accept that, is wrong, or the message is wrong. And maybe, you know, at the end of the day, it, we've, we've just misread what people are saying to us, or, or, or I'm not able to deliver it in a way that people like. And I accept that that would be my responsibility. So I think if that was the case, it would be time to, to, to go back to my day job, as I've said before, because quite clearly we're not making progress. It's not about whether Mrs. Amit beats me or not. It's about whether or not we do well. Um, we believe that if people vote for us, that we can do well. We actually think that if people vote for us in numbers, we can get into Parliament, or if not, we can make enormous progress. Uh, and and we, we keep saying the same thing. Voting for the existing 10 or existing 8 will deliver nothing new. But voting for the PDP will deliver a track record of constructive opposition, and I think that is what people would like to see. I'd just like to remind viewers that you can, of course, put in your questions as well. If you'd like to, that phone number, it's 200 79810, and the email is by election at gbc.gi. Let's move on to another email. Nick, can you name five... Oh, this is a bit of... Like, it's um, a quiz. It's multiple choice. Quiz. Can okay. you name five of the council estates in Gibraltar and when did you last visit them? Uh, can I name five? Okay. Um, Barrel Beg, Laguna, Glasses, Mid Harbours. I mean, when did I visit them? Barrel Beg last week, Laguna the week before. Um, Mid Harbours, we're still to do in the hustings. Um, you know, we've been around all the estates, or most of the estates, and the hustings that we're doing, and we'll finish the rest of them, and of course I can name them. You know, it's, uh, I, I'm not quite sure what the, the, the question was aimed at, but. Uh, it's a, it's a childish one, I would suggest. The, there's, there's something that I want to pick up from one uh, from your manifesto that you think we need to plan beyond a four-year cycle. Yes, I do. What, what exactly do you mean by this? I believe Gibraltar is at its best when we act together. And I think we've seen that in the Constitutional Committee when we came up with the new constitution. Uh, we saw that when we opposed the Anglo-Spanish threat in the Council of Representative Bodies, which I was a part of. Uh, we've seen that in the parliamentary committees in the UK. We've seen it on, on a more day-to-day uh, -day basis, such as UEFA bid. And, you know, in all of these areas, when we focus uh, on what unites us, particularly given the, the, the rather hostile neighbour we have, I think ultimately we, we can do uh, far better. And, and I think that is really the, the, the focus. Do you think, though, that... Um, um, <laughs> When, when you, when you say when, that what unites us, do you think realistically that that works in, in Parliament? You know, we, we, we're all talking about the bickering. You want to change the bickering. Well, I, how, how long do you think it takes anybody? No, no, I, think it, I think it's not difficult. Look, we've got a select committee on democratic and parliamentary reform that's actually been established. This is why this is what I've called a democratic storm. It's a perfect opportunity. We have a by-election, which won't affect government and opposition. We have the select committee that's been set up by the chief minister to consider parliamentary and democratic reform that needs to report within six months and changes will be implemented by 2015. So it's a perfect opportunity. Now, what I talk about is the economic cycles, four years. We could set up committees as the UK does. The UK has committees on foreign affairs, on accounts, on economics, on almost every subject, which are bipartisan committees, to study the work of the government and to make suggestions and recommendations. And you've seen them probably on, on, on uh, BBC Parliament and various different things. You've, you've seen them. Gibraltar has had several reports from the Foreign Affairs Committee. So mm -hmm. this is not something new. This is not something you know, I'm inventing. This is just a normal way of a modern democracy work in which we are behind. So you can establish uh, a parliamentary committee, which will obviously be, have a majority from the government, so it's controllable, that can make recommendations which go beyond the four-year cycle. Because our lives go beyond, beyond four years, and therefore, when we all try to do something that works for a longer period, it's going to be better. And we can make recommendations, whether on planning, on the approach to heritage, on the approach to terrorism, or on approach to economics, foreign affairs. There's a lot of areas where opposition members can be brought into a system which makes them more constructive by, the, by their nature. If you're working in a parliamentary committee, as a constitutional committee is a perfect example. There you had uh, Mr. Bosano, there you had uh, Keith Asapardi, Peter Caruana, Bernal Linares, Dr. Garcia, all working together, and they came to a unanimous view on what the new constitution should look like. These were people who previously were screaming at each other. Put in the right environment, they were working for Gibraltar. So it's perfectly doable. They screamed at each other during the... Well, they, fine, but they did achieve what is now a very, a very good constitution, which even at the time the GSOP had seven second thoughts, even today Albert Isla said that he thought it was a hell of an advancement. So, you know, what I'm saying to you is that 
when people are put in that situation and have the right attitude and the mindset, and this is what I think is currently missing in the GSD and in the GSLP, when you put that together and you understand that actually we're all in this together, um, then people can start thinking beyond four years and before beyond the next election. That won't mean that they will do everything uh, in harmony. That means that sometimes they won't agree with each other. And that's what political parties are, are about and differences. And that's up to people to convince each other. But I certainly think we can work together. Like in any business, in any family, in any environment, people normally work together. Unfortunately, in our politics at the moment, it's not happening. And I think if people want it to change and not just get switched off and get fed up, which is what we get, we get told all the time, then you've got to vote for it. You've got to actually vote for that change. Because if you vote exactly the same as you always have done, we will get exactly the same on the 5th of July. Talking of committees, you'd like, you'd ask to, be, to, to join the Committee on Parliamentary Reform. And this is something the PDP has always advocated, parliamentary reform. Yes, I mean, I would, I would certainly expect that if the Chief Minister um, has set up a committee on parliamentary reform, and if one of the uh, issues that I brought forward in this election was parliamentary reform, he would be hard-pressed not to include me. But if he did not include me, he certainly wouldn't prevent me giving evidence to it. Um, and so I would certainly want to work with the, with the government and the opposition in, in looking at the different scenarios that we can uh, work together with. For example, uh, we've talked about enlargement of the House, producing backbenchers. Look, a, a Peter Garawana or many other people may stay on as a backbencher if the backbench environment was, was established in a way that they felt they could contribute. Clearly, Mr. Garawana feels that he can contribute because he's still there as a backbencher when he really could have gone previously. He originally said it was because of cost, but given there's a by-election now and he stayed, it's quite clear that he feels he can contribute. So there are people that can contribute without necessarily being full-time, and I think that, that would hugely improve, improve Parliament. And the leader of the opposition said it himself. In his words, democracy gets enriched when you include them, and, and quite the opposite is true when you don't include them. He just probably doesn't want me in it, but, but other than that, I think he's, 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 he's thinking appropriately. So I think there's lots of changes. There's things like term limits, which I believe that we should have eight-year term limits for the, for the chief minister. I think that's helpful. The DPC, for example, I would have an opposition, opposition member in the DPC. That doesn't mean he's a majority, but he can contribute because ultimately he represents a lot of people. Um, the tender board, let's make sure that tenders are awarded honestly without any form of nepotism or cronyism. Why don't include an opposition member in the tender board? Those are the checks and balances which are just common sense. And if we wanted to change the way we do things, they are, they're perfectly doable. And I would be giving this evidence to, the, to that committee. If elected, I would, I would hopefully form part of that committee and try to persuade uh, Mr. Featham and, 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 and Mr. Picardo and the other people on that committee that that's the way to go. Is that, what, is that one of the main things that you'd change, the way Gibraltar is governed, the way politics works, or are there other concrete issues that that are really important to the party? No, they're, they're, they're huge issues for us. And this is, this is an important one because it touches on every aspect of the way we work. So it touches on health, housing, social services. I've just given an example with DPC. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it covers everything because it's how you conduct yourself, how you manage yourself, how you communicate the message. But, of course, we've come up with many other issues. So on the Moroccan... Uh, but in terms of priority, would that be well, one of them? Well, clearly it's one of them. It's clearly it's one of them. And, and there is the opportunity with this, this parliamentary committee. So it would be silly to ignore the opportunity. This, this is this clearly one. But we've covered many other issues. So, for example, we were one of the first, and in fact, I think we were the only party that, that led on the, on the agenda to get Moroccans treated fairly and reasonably. And when the, the, on the last, uh, when we're talking about that Moroccan hostel, it only left Gibraltar because the PDP raised it as absolutely unacceptable. It was an ex-prison remand centre that had been condemned by the EU. Didn't take it to bring it here to realise what it was. But the PDP ra raised the issue. We went and visited it. As a result, thankfully, it's gone in the government. So that's an example of what we can do. That's on one issue. But whether it's that education, we feel very strongly that our education system isn't as good as it should be. We, if you look at our 2011 manifesto, you'll see that we put a chart in it that said that in GCSE results, in A-level results, we are currently underperforming compared to the UK. And not just the UK with private schools, but actually state schools, even in Spanish. So, you know, education is <clears throat> a big issue for us. We think that it's important that we examine the structure from management all the way down. We challenge ourselves. While other parties are pretty quick, quick to just pat themselves on the back, we think we need to look at that. Vocational training is fundamentally important. We, I, we would establish schools that would consider issues such as where we have currently jobs, catering, gaming. So there's, there's, a, there's a spectrum of issues. This is not a one-issue party. We've had two... Uh, election campaigns, we've got a very thorough mm -hmm. policies, we would suggest more thorough than a lot of the uh, other two parties. Definitely not a one-party issue, but obviously the issue of style of government, which is an overarching situation, is an, is, is an important issue and it's current because there's a select committee that's considering it.
an email that uh, asks it as a fait accompli. Why did you turn down Danny Featham's offer of a merger between both your parties? Danny Featham has never offered uh, to merge both our parties. Danny Featham has asked me to, uh, I think on more than one occasion publicly, to come back to the GSD. Um, that, that, that was never the case. The, the discussion of merger, I said it on Viewpoint, uh, in the past was very simple. I said to Peter Garawana before the last election, look, I think if we established a new political opposition based on principle and policy, if we can establish something that takes the good of what you've done and some of our ideas, then we can establish a political force which will be for the benefit of JIB. That offer was repeated to Daniel Featham, uh, well, to Peter Garawana and Daniel Featham in September, where we said, look, I think we can do that, but it needs to be based <coughs> on policies and principles and needs to be a democratic political party that has a system that allows people to be voted in. Now, that was what the discussion. Uh, those discussions got nowhere, and so as a result, well, it's like anything. And I, I, I wouldn't disregard an alliance with any political party if Gibraltar's interests were at stake, if their policies and their principles were ones that we believed in. Um, but, you know, if they're not, and it isn't the case, then the PDP's position is that we must fight the election on our principles and our views and ask that people vote us in. Don't you think the electorate might think that, that you spend um, half a term with, probably with the opposition, and that would make you closer to them? No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think if... And you lose your individuality. Well, look, I've had so many opportunities to just not leave the GSD, go back to the GSD. <laughs> I've answered this question so many times. If that was the easy route, it's a downhill route, I would have taken it. I could have taken it ages ago and I continue to take it. The answer is no. Our views are that we need a different type of politics, which has not been delivered by the, by the GSD. It's precisely why we left. So we will not be going back to the GSD. If elected, we would provide constructive opposition and we would try to convince people at the next election that actually that our type of politics is of benefit to Gibraltar. If they judged us and in two years they said, you know what, you're doing a good job, Nick. The rest of your party, you're doing a good job, we'll vote you in. That's great. If they thought we weren't, well, I'm asking for this as an opportunity after seven years of hard work. If I'm not doing a good job, they're the, 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 the taxpayer is the person who employs me. They can vote me out, and that will be it. I'll be back to Would you say your party needs reinforcing? Of course it does. Of course it does. I'm the first one to admit it. Look, if this, this is a position, and I made it clear in the Chamber of Commerce uh, speech. I said, you know, 4th of July is D-Day for us. We are to be tested. And I'm not scared of that. You know, I'm not in this. This, this is not a game for me. You know, there is, uh, I'm thankful I've got a good career. I've got a lovely family. I can be doing lots of other things. I do it because I'm absolutely... I absolutely believe that this is the right way to go forward. But if my message isn't heard, then I understand that people have a different point of view. And so I will simply contribute in whatever way I can to Gibraltar and get on with, my, get on, get on with the rest of my life. So I understand what it's all about on the 4th of July. And what I say, if people want the PDP in politics, if over the last seven years they feel we haven't been away, if we've been here all the time, if over the last seven years they feel that we can actually contribute positively, then they have to vote for us. If they don't want to vote for us, inevitably, we, we cannot continue being. We're not a pressure group. We never wanted to be, we're, and, and therefore, it is entirely in the hands of the viewers. And I, and I hope that on the day, they will think that actually we may be helpful and contribute something to Gibraltar. It's a very specific question. Do you agree with keeping the political angle on National Day, as the GSLP Liberals have done? Yes, I do. I, I always thought it was a mistake of the GSD to... to, to, to call it a day on National Day. You know, we never know how the mood would change in Spain. We've just seen what's happened in Spain, a very extreme government, which is in essence a fascist type of approach to Gibraltar. And I think it is more important than ever to stress our unity. And National Day is, is, is the day that we clearly do it. Um, and I think it's as equally important to lobby in the UK and keep Nick, that we going. have to call it a day here as well. Thank you. So 20 seconds, why should they vote for you? Well, it's not about government or opposition. And ultimately, if people want the same, they can get it. They will vote for the GSD or they will vote for the GSLP. They will get a 10th GSLP voice or an 8th GSD voice. If they want a new voice, a constructive voice, the only logical voice is a PDP voice, and that's a vote for me. I ask you to think about it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you.